All right. Well, first of all, my name is Drew Lasky. I'm a senior at Oshkosh West. I'm a sports editor for the school newspaper, The Index. And I'd like to thank you on behalf of myself, the Oshkosh Foundation, and The Index. And let's get right into it. All right. No, all right. Thanks, for, thanks for having me. What, what elementaries and middle schools did you attend? So I actually went to a place called Longfellow Elementary um, for kindergarten and first grade. It was torn down um, and closed along with Dale School, which is now Dale Apartments. Uh, um, Longfellow was right by the old hospital, but I went to Washington Elementary, second through fifth, um, Webster Middle School, and then Oshkosh North High School. Do you have any favorite teachers or memories from, from back then? And in, in high school, there were numerous teachers uh, that you know played a big role. Um, but I, you know, I feel very fortunate to both have support and the opportunity that we had in Oshkosh. And I think that's something that continues today that um, we should never take for granted. Were you involved in any sports or clubs in high school? Yeah, so uh, in high school, I was a um, three sport athlete. So I played soccer in the fall. I tried to play basketball, uh, meaning I was on the team all four years uh, and I ran track. And uh, you know, those were things I grew up playing or got involved in in middle school. Um, I was also in high school orchestra. I had taken private violin lessons, um, you know, as a kid. And once I stopped taking those lessons, uh, joined high school orchestra. Um, but sports were definitely my primary uh, extracurricular activity and, um, you know, uh, certainly a big part of my time at Oshkosh North. If you were to do high school again, what would you have done differently and what advice do you have for students today? Yeah, I mean, I, I've been asked this before and I, I've thought about it. I don't spend a lot of time on regret because it's in the past and there's not a whole lot you can do. I focus on the future, but it's really hard because when you're growing up, there's a lot of distractions. Um, in my case, you know, social activities, uh, sports, um, you know, things probably unrelated to school, but education is really for you um, as a person. And so um, it's not that I didn't take school seriously, but I would have taken it more seriously. I would have thought about that more, that it was, it was for me. It wasn't just something that I was doing. And I would also think a little bit more in the future. Um, I think it's easy to have sort of a 24 hour disposable, what am I doing today? What am I doing tomorrow mentality? Um, and it's not that I had to have figured out what I wanted to do, because I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up and I'm 47 now. But, uh, I, you know, I think it's important to kind of think about, well, where, where do you want to be? What are kind of the things that you might be interested in doing or that you learn about yourself? Or maybe equal to that, what are the things you don't want to do that you know about yourself? Like, I, you know, I, I don't want to work in a cube by myself. I know that. I like social interaction. I like diversity and work. But I just, I think I wish that I had been a little li bit less about the moment and a little bit more, um, I guess I was a little immature um, about school and its purpose. And so to the extent that you can enjoy the now, but think a little bit about where you might want to be, I think it's a challenge for all young people growing up. But but that's, I would have wished that this version of me had, could talk to that version of me. Uh, what schools did you attend and what did you study? Yeah, I went to Hamlin University in St. Paul, which was a small private liberal arts school. It's where my brother had gone. Um, you know, I remember my senior year thinking about different colleges, uh, did visit some, um, you know, with my dad on a tour. But, you know, I feel like I had uh, was pretty disposable about um, the next 24 hours. Um, yeah, and maybe if I had done it again, would have thought broader about, you know, who I want to be and where I want to be. But overall, I had a good experience. Now my father was asking if uh, Kyra Tuff was going to make an appearance today. Kyra right, Tuff, uh, he's always with me. Um, yeah, prior, you know, I, I, had a, I had a time in Los Angeles. And while I was working in government, I had to at least get my, you know, foot wet in the entertainment world. And I, uh, I struck magic one night and uh, I will forever be the... 2003 West Coast Air Guitar Champion. Can you explain your pathway to becoming a, a, a state representative after college? You know, after college, I went out to Washington, D.C. Um, you know, I remember I wanted to have something lined up and I got an internship um, because I didn't want to graduate and be sitting on a couch wondering what to do uh, or, per, you know, extending college any longer. So I went out to Washington, D.C. Um, you know, and as someone who was interested in government, I uh, worked for Senator Cole on the Hill, uh, and it was a real thrill. Um, you know, seeing uh, 
seeing our government in action, you know, working there uh, first as an intern. And then um, I went back to, uh, to St. Paul for a little bit to work on a campaign and then uh, went back to Washington for a few years. Um, I think I've always been interested in public service um, and that is not always political. Um, I've always been interested in local government and that was sort of when I came out of DC, I was sort of turned off by uh, the beginning of what we kind of see now, um, really the toxic politics, you know, that's when cable news was really emerging. It was still much better than it is now, but, um, you know, I, I, the thing I like about public service and politics is ultimately problem solving public policy. Um, so I went to get my master's degree at Madison uh, in public policy and public affairs. Um, and then I took a job, got recruited to go to Long Beach, California, where I, uh, served as a management assistant um it's how they recruit people um and i was interested in being a city manager you know professional who was hired um, by a city to sort of be a ceo and um, i did that for a year worked in different departments and then i was a budget analyst where i sat in a cube and crunched numbers and as an extrovert that was not me um but i knew that that's not what i wanted to do and i was finding myself uh you know, more and more getting uh, passionate and involved and upset about, you know, the, the war in Iraq and some of our politics and uh, sort of having a end of my 20s felt the need to challenge myself. And uh, I also knew that I didn't know what I wanted to do and wasn't sure I needed to be in California. So I relocated to the Midwest and um, yeah, I realized that the state representative in Oshkosh had been there since I was in middle school. And uh, I you know, I did one of those Myers-Briggs jobs assessment of what career you should be doing. And it said uh, running for office uh, or being a politician was one of them. So I think as someone who was outgoing and who cared, it maybe wasn't that obvious to me, um, but it was something that I, uh, you know, chose to do and then sort of got the bug and embraced. Um, you know, when I first ran, I lost. Um, and I thought that might be the case given that um, I didn't have any experience, but um, I stuck to it and, uh, you know, ran again and was successful and, uh, you know, I've uh, have remained in office since. Uh, can you explain what you do in your role at, as a state representative? Yeah. So, and, you know, the world's a busy, complicated place. So you never make assumptions that everybody knows exactly what you do. My wife doesn't even totally get what I do sometimes, but um, so I view my job as, as representing the community that elects me um, down in Madison. That means uh, sharing the, the challenges, the issues that I know from staying in touch with people, from listening to people, uh, using that as a lens for um, pushing for decisions on different issues um, that address the challenges that I know that we face in my community. Um, there are obviously challenges around the state that we focus on as well, but then um, it's a two-way street. Then taking what's happening in Madison and communicating back uh, to the people that I represent, you know, here are the things that are happening. Um, here are the state decisions that are going to impact you. You know, here are opportunities. Um, and so you're sort of the go-between between the people uh, that you represent, all of them, and uh, what's happening in Madison. And uh, you know, yes, we're the legislative branch, so we're the lawmaking branch, but but as a representative, we're also where people call when um, when they need help with unemployment or tax assistance or, um, you know, child support or just other casework issues or sometimes where they don't know where to start. Um, as a representative, my job is to try to help people and uh, in any way possible. So there's a you know, great deal of casework as well, but um, I've always viewed it as making sure that I'm uh, staying in touch with and communicating, you know, both in Madison and in Oshkosh. Um, be, being in Madison and all around the state of Wisconsin, how does Oshkosh differ from the rest of the state? What makes Oshkosh so special? Well, I mean, because uh, I think Oshkosh has it all. I mean, it's, it's an incredible balance. We always say Wisconsin is sort of like a, um, it's, it's kind of like the rest of the country. We have urban, rural, industrial, agriculture, um, university, research, uh, tech, and that's a little bit like the rest of the country. And so um, that kind of diversity is what makes up Wisconsin. I think in the Fox Valley, you know, we have a um, proud tradition of manufacturing in, in industry. Um, you know, that Matt Oshkosh has traditionally been 
um, you know, factory town. But I think we have tremendous quality of life, tremendous work ethic. Um, and I think that's, you know, we have the third largest university in the state. Uh, what have you seen change most about Oshkosh in your time here? It's a great question. Well, it's a lot more diverse, um, you know, both racially um, and, you know, and economically. Um, and um, I think the campus plays a much bigger role. There used to sort of be this, as I understand it, sort of this town and gown divide. And I feel like the university has really become more of an integrated part of the uh, community instead of sort of this dividing factor. Um, clearly, uh, I think the food's gotten a lot better. <laughs> um, you know, we're, we're seeing some, um, you know, more commitment towards the arts and public art. Um, just some of the other characteristics that um, culturally um, that I think are, uh, you know, you, you see in other communities are happening in Oshkosh as well, um, you know, especially in the music scene and in the art scene and in some of the venues, um, you know, big, big and small. And uh, I guess the, you know, I moved from Los Angeles back to Oshkosh and uh, the sense of community is something that should never be um, overlooked anywhere. I mean, your ability to make a difference and be involved in something uh, in a place like Oshkosh is uh, is incredible. And um, it's so complicated and so hard even to feel like you had a community amongst 10 million people in a county like Los Angeles. Um, you know, but here, uh, you know, there's, there's ways to help steer and to be involved and um, yeah, I think there are a lot of creative people that are really committed to making this community really dynamic.